neither a tree to be overtaken by the autumn breeze nor one to be broken by the tempest wind. I'm green in winter and verdant in spring, an intertwine of branch and leaf, a unity of green. Standing tall, reaching up to the heavens, I'm green, I'm free, I'm the evergreen, the cypress tree. its history, Persia, or modern-day Iran, has seen conquerors, from Alexander the Great to Mongol chieftains, outsiders who stormed in and became enchanted with what they found and eventually succumbed to the sophisticated customs and age-old traditions of this ancient land. The roots of the tree of Iranian culture run so deep and are so closely integrated with Iranian soil that no passing storm has ever been able to shake them loose or to erase the identity of the Iranian people. In this regard, an analogy has been drawn by some historians between the characteristics of Iranian culture and the cypress tree. This evergreen is strangely flexible. Strong winds or even storms only force it to bend, but they cannot break it like other trees. And when calm returns, it stands tall again. Iraq's eight-year-long war against Iran left much ruin and devastated the economy. But after the war in 1989, the cypress tree mechanism was set in motion again and the construction era began. Tehran, the capital, leads the pack in this race. The powerful and dynamic renovations and reconstructions in different sectors throughout the country bear a message. Looking for tomorrow, Islamic Iran is heading towards its new destiny. Iran holds 15% of the proven gas reserves of the world. This figure amounts to about 21 trillion cubic meters of gas making Iran the second most gas-rich country in the world. Gas is a cheaper and less polluting source of energy than other fossil fuels. Therefore, much has been done in the past few years 
to provide Iranians nationwide with this blessing. The number of gas subscribers, which was about 50,000 in 1978, has now risen to about 2.6 million throughout the country. Iran is also in possession of 10% of the world's oil reserves, which lends special importance to the country's petroleum and petrochemical industry. The Iraqi invasion of Iran created a stagnation in the petroleum industry. This situation lasted for about a decade, after which the full-scale construction era began. For example, is the Bandar Imam Khomeini petrochemical complex, which was rehabilitated and returned to 100% nominal capacity operation. This complex is one of the largest in the world and currently has a capacity of 5.5 million tons per year. Iran is a vast country, almost three times the size of France, made up of plateaus, mountains, and deserts. The tradition of road building in Iran goes back to the early days of the First Kingdoms, the well-known Achaemenian Royal Road linking Susa to Sardis in Asia Minor dates back to the 6th century BC. Ever since then, until the discovery of sea routes between Europe and the Far East, the country remained as the hub of routes linking the East and the West. The legendary Silk Road of the Middle Ages also ran through Iran. Iran's unique geographical location makes it the fastest, safest, and most economical route for the transfer of commodities from Caucasia and Central Asia to the Persian Gulf. In this respect, the construction and operation of the Bafk Bandar Abbas Railway has been a major breakthrough. This railroad runs 635 kilometers in double track and has a transport capacity of 15 million tons per year. The Central Asian republics now have direct and inexpensive access to international waters for the shipment of their goods. Every year, about 50 domestic and international exhibitions are held at Tehran's International Fairground. exhibitions have attracted the attention of many foreign and Iranian businessmen and manufacturers. The free trade zones in the Persian Gulf ports and islands, like Kish, have furthermore facilitated international trade. With regards to air transportation, development and reconditioning of airports, expansion of passenger and cargo fleets, and improvement of maintenance services, 
were highly underscored in the programs of the construction era. The efforts and investments made for development of the telecom and postal networks offering various modern services, establishment of video conferencing facilities, and computer links with the world's information highways and networks have come to fruition. The telecom network development throughout the country is regarded to be among the most rapid pace progresses made. By 1999, the number of cities and towns provided with telecom facilities for the first time ever exceeded 12,000, with more than 7 million subscribers nationwide. The country's engineering power and project management was further proven in dam building. The International Dam Building Commission has recently named Iran as the third Asian country after China and Japan capable of building dams higher than 100 meters. A total of 30 reservoir dams have been constructed or are now under construction. Remarkable developments have taken place in Iran's power industry. The electricity generation capacity of power stations increased 83%. This growth even made sales of electricity possible to neighboring countries. In 1993 alone, electrical power was extended to 2,400 villages, making life much easier for village dwellers and farmers. <music> Diversity of climates in Iran is a wonder. The difference between the highest and lowest temperatures at one point in time could be about 40 degrees Celsius. While some people ski in the north, others may be swimming or scuba diving in the Persian Gulf. With this kind of climatic diversity, Iran is also the land of a variety of fruits and produce. This variety of fruits and agricultural products provides the most desirable material for the food processing industry. Today, Iranian industries are expanding rapidly and harmoniously to meet the needs of modern Iran. The high number of construction projects undertaken in this period put a strain on the metal industry. Iron and steel were in great demand. Therefore, serious effort went into the completion of unfinished metal manufacturing plants and the establishment of new ones, such as the huge Mobaraki steel complex near Isfahan. Because of its industrial zone, 
Isfahan can be called the Manchester of Iran, but is most famous for its fascinating plaza called Image of the World, built in the 16th century. Admirably beautiful and unblemished, this city, which was the standard bearer in Muslim Persia's architecture, is reminiscent of the flourishing of art and architecture in this land. Millions of beautiful, colorful tiles, which decorate Isfahan's mosque, attract the eyes of all visitors. Urbanism is deeply rooted in Iranian civilization. Accounts of the ancient civilization of Elam, which dates back to 6,000 years ago, also the royal Achaemenian city of Persopolis, and descriptions in travel books on cities such as Tabriz and Rey by Marco Polo and others, have all indicated the continuity of city life across the plateau and the important part that cities have played in giving shape to the history and character of the Iranian people. A still standing example is Arga Bam, meaning the Citadel of Bam, which is among the most impressive historical sites in the world, as it is an entire city over 2,000 years old and seemingly frozen in time. Hospitable and hard working. This is how Marco Polo described the people of Iran when he stopped in Yazd while passing through the country. Yazd has the largest Zoroastrian population in the country. This religious minority has inhabited the Yazd area for centuries and has enjoyed all social rights. The same spirit of tolerance and freedom applies to the Jewish and Christian communities throughout Iran as well. Islam emphasizes the oneness of God and its message is the reiteration of the message of Abraham which was to return to the unity of God and therefore is open to all forms as long as the basic unity is not compromised. In this respect, Islam calls for universal brotherhood among all people regardless of their language, color or race. It was perhaps in this respect that at the UN General Assembly, President Khatami elaborated on the Islamic school of thought and proposed that the year 2001 be named the year of dialogue among civilizations. The UN General Assembly's ratification of this proposal indicates that the world community as a whole is looking for peace and mutual understanding. The holding of the summit meeting of the Organization of the Islamic Conference in Tehran, participation of most heads of Islamic states, 
and election of Iran as the rotational president of the body, further indicates that Iran intends to play a more constructive and conducive role in the Muslim world. The Holy Shrine of Imam Reza, a descendant of Prophet Muhammad, in the northeastern city of Mashhad, is one of the most important pilgrimage centers in the Muslim world, which attracts millions of people every year. According to the Islamic point of view, articulated by Prophet Muhammad, every person is encouraged to acquire knowledge from the cradle to the grave. In this respect, believing that education is the best investment any country can make, Iran is currently allocating an unprecedented amount of its financial resources, manpower, and facilities to this matter. To start with, the Literacy Movement Organization started a comprehensive campaign in the country's rural areas, as well as cities, to upgrade the academic education of children, the elderly, and especially women. Now, 85% of the population over six years of age are literate. This successful campaign has been acclaimed by international organizations, including UNESCO. At the same time, the Ministry of Education has allocated a considerable portion of its resources to increasing the number of primary and secondary schools and also upgrading the quality of education. The accomplishments and successes of Iranian students at international physics, mathematics, chemistry and computer olympiads is a result of this effort. Today, the total number of students studying in various fields in the nation's universities and institutes of higher education is 1.2 million, nearly doubling during the past 10 years. The total number of female college students has shown an almost 320% increase in the past few years, closing the gap between men and women in the labor market. About 46% of the total Iranian population is under 15 years of age. This is perhaps the youngest age composition in the world and consequently makes the population full of life and youthful energy. establishment of cultural and recreational centers and sports facilities, which required extraordinary zeal and commitment, have now provided a pleasant pastime environment for the youth and adults.
Throughout the country, a more traditional sport like wrestling is as popular as the modern ones like skiing and football. Athletic competitions usually draw great crowds. Football matches with more than 100,000 spectators are common in Iran. Iranian football players have distinguished themselves by winning first place in Asia. In wrestling too, in 1998, Iran ranked first in the world. The success of Iranian sports teams in recent years has given rise to new sports publications. After the latest presidential election, which was the 20th major election of any kind since 1978, an extraordinary rise in the number of publications, periodicals and dailies is noticeable, demonstrating a greater public participation in social and political arenas. Today, cinema is a popular and highly praised medium in Iran. Some 60 movies are produced annually. Nearly one-fifth of the total number of directors are talented women. During the past few years, Iranian films have been awarded many prizes at international festivals for their delicacy of ideas and simplicity of subjects. Every year, various folk music and film festivals are held in Tehran and other major cities. in Iran have always been interrelated. Music and poetry provide a powerful connection between the outer secular life of the everyday world and the inner life of the spirit and the emotions. It is perhaps for this reason that Iranians are able to express themselves best through these media and have consequently produced over the ages some of the finest poetry the world has ever known by poets like Ferdowsi, Mulabi, Hafiz, and Sadi. Sadi is highly regarded for his golden maxims, which are considered to be a treasure of true wisdom. The United Nations organization has displayed one of his universally applicable maxims. The sons of Adam are the limbs of one body, created of one essence. When time pains one limb, the others can find no peace. Thou who hast no sympathy for the troubles of others, art unworthy of the name man. For all Iranians, the practical realization of the principles of liberty, independence, and Islamic Republic brought forth by the late Imam Khomeini, have introduced profound changes in all domains. From the youthful and creative ferment of Iran's present emanates a vision for a better future, to become a reality at the hands of this generation and the generations to come, and to further strengthen the evergreen cypress tree of Iranian culture and civilization.